need to design a path that connects the critical infrastructure, those orange nodes, using the least amount of cable. The winning team will be the one that uses the least amount of cable. But remember, you'll be penalised for doubling back and cutting across blocks. So plan your network carefully. Today's challenge is all about network theory, which is the mathematics of interconnected objects and their relationships. An effective solution will create a minimum spanning tree that will wire up your city in the most efficient manner. Essentially, measure carefully and let the algorithm do the rest. So, like I said, any set of objects that are connected together, we can represent as a mathematical network. And actually, throw some things at me, right? I haven't told you what A, B, C, D, and E are and all that kind of thing. What could these, we call them nodes or vertices, what could they represent? What kinds of objects might be connected in this way? Suggestions? House. Houses, okay. So these could be houses and they're connected by roads. Give me another one. Um, a social network. Fantastic. So they could be people and these are like, you know, relationships. Um, they could be by friendship, uh, family. They could be marriage, etc. Okay. Give me another one. Objects in a house. Objects in a house. So maybe, for example, um, these could be like appliances and they're all connected to each other wirelessly. Maybe they could be computers. Now, I, we could play this game for a long time, right? Maybe they could be... Um, stations in a train network. Maybe they could be, we talked about um, relationships before, maybe they could be human beings, but maybe they're not relationships. Maybe it's about, say, for example, something we've all gotten familiar over the last two and a half years. These could be connections of a disease transferring from person to person, right? Maybe they could be animals in a food web, right? My whole point in giving this sort of prologue is network theory, even though it's sort of simple mathematics, it's so useful because it can apply to anything, right? Anytime you have things in relationship, we use the mathematics of networks. Now you are going to be working in a city that looks a little bit like this. These are going to be nodes that we want to connect with power, okay? So it's kind of like an electrical grid, except things have broken down. We need to reconnect things. And even though like the normal functioning city, everything's sort of, you know, you've got multiple paths between things. We call them edges, these, these lines. Um, what we want to do is get everything wired up as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, so that we can at least get everyone back up to some minimum working sort of um, arrangement or setup, okay? So what you're going to do is within all of these different options, and these might be actually distances, right? So the city may not look physically like this. You might have, see, this is 14 and this is four. Those might be the actual distances between them. But if I put them on a map, you know, some, some of these things that are very close together very close together. It's just hard to understand the relationships between them. So that's why I've just sort of arranged it like this, but the numbers tell you how far apart things are or what the cost is. Like maybe, see how this is 14? Maybe it's not that it's far, but you actually have to say tunnel through rock to get there. So it's difficult, right? The whole idea is it's cost in some way, shape or form. So I'm going to teach you an algorithm. Um, it's called Prim's algorithm. It's a very basic idea that will help you to create what we call a minimum spanning tree, which sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but it's exactly what it sounds like. A tree is just a connection of all of these things. It's spanning, which means it's going to get to everything, um, A to B to C, all the way through to I, and it's minimum. We want to have the shortest distance possible, or the shortest cost, right? And one of the cool things about this algorithm is you can start anywhere, right? We could start on I or F if you wanted to, but just because I think it might be a little easier for us to follow, let's start at A. Now, if we're over here, we eventually are going to connect everything together. And Prim's algorithm just says, look for the lowest cost for any of the different nodes around, right? So when you look at A, it can connect to B and H, which is the lowest cost. B. It's just B, right? Because that's four. So we could say, all right, this... This edge is going to be part of my minimum spanning tree. Now, I'm going to keep on doing this, but I'm going to also not just keep track of where I can connect to, but where I was before. So you can see there's an 8 here and an 8 here and an 11. So of those options, either of those 8s are identical. Right? So let's just keep going and see where we get up to. If I join that up, now again, look at where my, my sort of... Uh, baby tree has started and where it can grow toward. What's the next node that has the lowest cost? I. 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 Ah, now C is C to D is, is less than what we've done before, but C to I is certainly the cheapest. So you can see I'm going to start to form this 
down here. And I'm just going to kind of progress through. I've got a, well, you have a look and tell me what's the next one. It's going to be G. G, because that's the six, like so. What's going to be next? S. Oh, do we it's H? the cheapest oh. one along the whole thing, because remember, it's yeah, anywhere connected on here, it's um, G to H, isn't it, right? So I'll do that. And now you can see, just as I pause here, right? I could have connected A to H at the start, but this is actually a cheaper way to go about it because I had to use these. I had to be connected to them in the end. So this one, maybe they're like right next to each other or there's some existing wiring that I can just use and that makes it very cheap, okay? And I guess we, let's try and finish it off, right? Where would you go next from here? F. Yeah, I think F, that two, right there. I've got 10, 14, four, Seven. so it looks like. That thing, though, is going to connect you back to something you've already done. So you don't need that, do you? So have a Can look we go again. go from the C to D? Very good. So that's yep. seven, which we abandoned before, because you're like, oh, I've got a two available. Now it's the cheapest option to something that isn't connected yet. Going back here is kind of silly and um, redundant, right? It's not going to give me a minimum spanning tree. So let's go up here. Now, I'm pretty close, aren't I? I only have E to connect up, so which is the cheapest way to do it? Nine. D to F, yeah. that's nine. Have a quick check for me. Is everything joined up? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now we have a spanning tree and you can actually go ahead and you can test this out. You could say, rub that out, try a different option. Maybe you decide, oh, you know how we did this one. We chose between this one and this one, right? Maybe you say, well, let's give the other one a go and see if we end up with something that's cheaper, that actually gets us a more efficient answer. That's the way the algorithm works. It's not complicated but it does rely on having all of these numbers, doesn't it? We're not going to give you those numbers. You're gonna to have to work that part out, but that'll be part of your planning stage. And then, I mean, not just draw it, you're actually gonna go and do this wiring physically and you'll have to be careful when you do it, okay? This challenge is all about network theory, which is the mathematics of interconnected objects and their relationships. An effective solution will create a minimum spanning tree that will wire up your city in the most efficient manner. Measure carefully and let the algorithm do the rest. Not that way. There's an orange no, one here. No, go that way. No. Okay. okay.